David Broder is considered the dean of the Washington media. Um, he loves the Washington establishment. Um, now, he uh, calls himself a centrist and sticks to the center of Washington, not the country, no matter what happens. Now, that's incredibly irrational. Why? Because, for example, in 1980, when uh, Broder is making arguments for how wonderful it is to be modern and centrist, uh, we were far to the left of where we are today. The spectrum, the political spectrum in Washington has moved enormously to the right. You'd have to be blind, deaf, and dumb not to see that. And Broder today says, oh, I'm centrist right between the Democrats and the Republicans. But if you're right between the Democrats and the Republicans in 2010, you couldn't have been in the same place in 1980. That doesn't make any sense. That means most of your opinions have changed. For example, when George H.W. Bush was the establishment, we had a policy that no country is allowed to do a first strike. That was called the New World Order. When his son was president, we decided we were going to do first strikes. Those are polar opposites. But people who work in the Washington establishment, like David Broder, go, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, centrist, that's awesome. Whatever's, whoever's in charge, yes, sir, absolutely, sir. And now Obama's in charge, don't get me wrong, it's not like Broder's a Republican. He just suck up to anybody who's in power. And he's like, Obama's brilliant and a great politician, la, 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 la. So he explains that in his last article. And then he's got a brilliant question and answer about how do we, what should Obama do next? This is the latest parlor game in Washington. So um, he says, well, there's two ways to, uh, that the economy can recover. One, it has to do with the business cycle, but who the hell can understand that? Already you sound painfully dumb. So let's get the first quote here from his Washington Post column. He says, for example, one is the power of the business cycle as to what could change the economic situation. The tidal force that throughout history has dictated when the economy expands and when it, when, when it contracts. Economists struggle to analyze this, but uh, they almost inevitably conclude that it cannot be rushed and almost resist political command. As the saying goes, the market will go where it is going to go. Why don't you just raise your hand and say, I'm an idiot, I don't know anything about economics. Okay, what are we going to do about the economy? And your answer is, ah, I don't know. The business cycle goes up and it goes down. Who can keep up with it? No, no. There's reasons why it goes up and down. I'm not saying that I know all the answers or that we can accurately predict exactly what it's going to do. But do you have a general sense of what works and what doesn't? Look at our history. After the Great Depression, we put in really tough laws regulating the banks to make sure they couldn't take risks, great risks in terms of leverage, and that they couldn't risk the depositors money. For 50 years we had a stable banking system. Then we removed those safeguards and it went to hell. The savings and loans crisis and then as we removed more and more regulations with the debacle that happened in 2007 and 2008. But David Broder goes, oh who could tell about the business cycle? Alright, so he says since you can't tell anything about business or the economy, I got a different idea. Oh, interesting. What's your idea, Mr. Broder? He says, quote, what else might affect the economy? The answer is obvious, but its implications are frightening. War and peace influence the economy. Interesting. So I wonder where he's going with this. He says, look back at the FDR and the Great Depression. What finally resolved that economic crisis? World War II. Here's where Obama is likely to prevail with strong Republican support in Congress for challenging Iran's ambition to become a nuclear power, he can spend much of 2011 and 2012 orchestrating a showdown with the mullahs. This will help him politically because the opposition party will be urging him on. And as tensions rise and we accelerate preparations for a war, the economy will improve. So you're suggesting that we make preparations for war and go to war where, as we saw in Iraq, hundreds of thousands of people died. Because you think that might be politically advantageous to the president, and it might help our economy a little bit. That's grotesque. Now, he's going to finish up by saying that's not what he's suggesting, as he suggests it again. Watch for yourself. Here is the quote. Uh, I am not suggesting, of course, that the president incite a war to get reelected, but the nation will rally around Obama because Iran is the greatest threat to the world in the young century. If he can confront this threat and contain Iran's nuclear ambitions, he will have made the world safer and may be regarded as one of the most successful presidents in history. So I'm not suggesting he attack Iran for political reasons, except 
that I think he should attack Iran, so why call him one of the most successful presidents in history? Let us begin to discuss how stupid this is. Okay, number one, you know why the economy is stimulated at all, if it is, under a war? Because you have a lot of government spending. That spending is to build weapons, use those weapons, build up an army, etc. Dean Baker says, hey, perhaps you could do government spending, but not use it towards war. Maybe you could use it to build roads or highways or bridges to do infrastructure. But if you suggest that to David Broder, he goes, oh, liberal spending. Conservative spending on starting wars is perfectly okay. Liberal spending to, on the American people to create jobs here, no, 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 we can't have it. That's not centrist. Okay, point number two. Uh, well, you know what? <laughs> Matt Iglesias says, you know what, if we want, how about we build all that stuff, all the weapons you want, David Broder, and all the weapons that the defense contractors are dying to get so they, you know, push everybody in Washington towards this end. Just do it. Just don't use it to kill and murder people, okay? I mean, if the worst case scenario is you just desperately want to build stuff for no reason, at least don't kill people with it. Have you no conscience whatsoever? Now, of course, I'm not in favor of that, uh, but he, he says, by the way, Iglesias makes another good point. He's like, you know what would happen in a war with Iran? Other than the fact that we would lose tr tremendous amount of American lives, let alone Iranian lives, energy prices would spike. They'd go through the roof because now you're cutting off a huge source of oil in the middle of a war. They're not going to be able to efficiently get oil out of Iran. You know, you think that would help the economy? My guess is, no, that would significantly hurt the economy. But David Broder apparently knows nothing about economics, so he can't get that through his thick skull. I don't know nothing about economics, but my idea is, let's go kill Iranians. And Iran is the biggest security threat. Do you have any idea what's happening in the world? Did Iran attack us on 9-11? No. They, in fact, uh, opposed to an enemies with al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda is also against Iran. Iran is Shiite, al-Qaeda is Sunni. You know where Al-Qaeda is? Pakistan and Yemen. We just had a, some, somebody uh, put explosives on a plane headed over here from Yemen. Yemen. Uh, uh, every source says Al-Qaeda and Bin Laden is in Pakistan. Those are the guys trying to attack us, but there's Washington establishment doesn't want that. They want a war with Iran. And if you want to be a successful president, if you want to be a good boy, what you do is you go kill Iranians. Okay, and you drop bombs on their heads, and then after a disastrous war like Iraq, and we've killed more civilians over there, let alone everybody else, then David Broder and his bloodlust will be appeased. And then they'll say, you've been a good president, and you've helped the economy. Even if you believed everything David Broder does about the economy, and I would pity you if you did, you think that's really the way to go? To improve our economy a little bit? To go and start a war? where we drop bombs from the air and they land on sometimes the right targets, sometimes the wrong targets, and all those people die, you're there this callous disregard for American lives that would die in that war and for Iranian lives is beyond grotesque. So why am I against the Washington media? For crap like this. This is what we want to change. I would tell David Broder that he should be embarrassed, but apparently he lacks the capacity.